fairly healthy over under at 48, but Arizona at Philadelphia. We know that this Eagles offense has had some struggles lately. Do you think this could potentially be a get right game as we're heading to the playoffs against what has been a, a fairly poor Cardinals defense? I think it is, yeah. I mean, you look at the Cardinals and you can see on screen there, they rank 31st for both the pass and run in DVOA. They just they do not have the strength on defense to deal with even kind of average teams, let alone the Eagles, who, while they're not playing anywhere close to the level they played at last year, they're still a top eight passing offense. They're still a top five run offense. So... What is it the Cardinals do well? I just don't know. I, I can't put my finger on one thing that they do particularly well. Since Kyler came back, he's flashed at points and he's looked much better on the ground than we kind of expected him to be doing coming off an ACL injury. But his rushing production of 31.2 yards per game is eighth among all quarterbacks. He's very close to like the Patrick Mahomes, Trevor Lawrence area where it's kind of there, but it's not really helping. It's not massively boosting. All it's doing at the minute is just helping Kyler just stay afloat in his fantasy production. His passing has been very spotty. Well, you know, sort of like 6% below his career average of 66% completion rate. And of course, part of that comes into the fact that Trey McBride is the only decent option who's been out there consistently. I think you can absolutely go back to Trey McBride this week after a disappointing week last week where he had 31 yards, which was lowest since week nine. So this week he faces an Eagles defense that allow the 12th most fantasy points to the tight end position. I think that he can be a league winner for you this week, much like he's been a league winner all season. If Marquise Brown plays, I think you have to play him just because the Eagles are so bad against the pass. They've allowed the league high most um, fantasy points to the wide receiver position. But outside of him, Michael Wilson, Greg Dort, Rondale Moore, are you really wanting to play them in championship weekend? That's not something I can bring myself to do. I think that on the Eagles side, it's very straightforward. You know, you start everyone. Goddard had nine targets in back-to-back -back games, and he looks pretty good at the minute. Um, I think you look at DeAndre Swift, and he had his best game that he's had in weeks. Um so that all just feels very easy for me. James Conner is somebody that I think if you've got him, you're probably going to have to play him. He's been a top 12 running back for three weeks straight. He's had 306 yards and four touchdowns in that period. But I don't feel fantastic about it because the Eagles, they've given up the third fewest fantasy points to the running back position. Their run defense ranks fifth best. Um, sorry, ranks 16th best. It's middle of the road, but they have a habit of kind of clamping down on running backs in terms of giving up fantasy points. Yeah, I think James Conner, for me, he's he's kind of outside my top 20. He's a start if you're absolutely desperate, but hopefully if, you, if you've if you made your, your fantasy title game, if you're playing for that championship, hopefully you've got a better option than James Conner to be selected in there right now. The Colin Murray question, I wanted to pick your brains, Tom. I've, I've been toying with this over the last few days. I think I've been a proponent that the Cardinals would keep Colin Murray long term. I, th I think that was my thought. But given they're now potentially got a top two pick, we know that there's two elite options in this draft upcoming. Do you think that Colin Murray could be moved this offseason? I definitely think he could be, and I think that there's enough teams who would look at Kyler Murray and go, okay, his contract's quite palatable, his play coming back from injury was reasonable, but I, mean, I can't work out what the kind of compensation would be for Kyler Murray. If I was the Cardinals, I would want a decent return for him. I think, you know, you'd have to say minimum of first-round pick for a player who's got the record he's got, but how many teams are going to want to take a first round pick on a quarterback who is getting paid a lot of money and hasn't really shown an awful lot since he came back in the first offense that he's ever changed from the offense he'd been running for the last few years, which was the one which he was, you know, tailor designed for him and plucked as the QB one in that draft. So I think he can. I think that the Cardinals could go a number of ways because I don't think that the Cardinals are going to be able to get right in just one draft. I think you're talking about two years before they're going to be back competing at the level they'd like to be. 
Yeah, I think it's a fascinating question and one we're probably going to be talking about for the next, what, three, four months, I think. Actually, Kyler's contract's quite palatable. It's 37 million next year, 30 million, 39 million if he's traded. And those numbers are really reasonable for a franchise quarterback. So, yeah, I think you're probably wanting a first if you're the Cardinals. And I think if a team's willing to pay that, then I think he gets moved. If not, I guess the Cardinals probably move back from, from the 102 if that's where they end up last, landing. But we've got a couple of questions in the chat, Tom. So Jerry's asking Tua or Goff this week. That's Goff for me. Yeah, that's Goff for me too. Perfect. And then Brian, he's got a dynasty question. Uh, he'll either have the 101 or 102 as he's in the toilet bowl. Desperate for running back. Could I really pass on my, uh, MHJ for whichever running back lands in the best spot? Um, never, ever, 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 ever draft for need in Dynasty. Draft for talent, trade for need. It's it's one of my monikers that you'll hear me saying for the next six months as we're talking through prospects. Never, ever draft for, for need, particularly in this draft where it's looking like running back could be very thin, and uh, in a one QB league, we could see three, four wide receivers and a tight end go before any running back is there. So if you are truly that desperate at running back, maybe make a trade. But yeah, do not reach and take a running back in the top two picks this year. I think, I mean, you could take the 101 and trade that for somebody, you know, potentially the kind of guys like Bijan Robinson or Brees Hall. You yeah. know, it's, uh, it doesn't to be honest, a rookie. With the way Harrison looks as a prospect, you can probably get something on top of Bijan or, or Brees Hall for the 101 right now. Um, I think he's going to walk into the NFL as probably a top 10 wide receiver in Dynasty and, and maybe I'm being a little bit soft there. He could ever end up being a top five wide receiver. That's how good he looks as a prospect. So close. We are so, so close. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, go ahead, do a solace, click subscribe right now. We have got so much planned for the off season. You know, do it now and it will help you later.